Hey everybody, this is uh, Rob Fisher and Lewis Sr., my partner. And Lewis and I, while we, while we won't really known each other for about seven or eight years now, we, we're kindred spirits in that we go way back. We come from different industries, but we, uh, we also have some, some common themes about our, our life as, as operators and workers and leaders. And so I asked Lewis to join me on this uh, journey of intentional and practical application of hop principles. And uh, Lewis, you just want to introduce yourself very quickly and, you know, talk about, talk a little bit about the story that, that, that kind of got us into to making this a course for people to really understand what they can do with these principles. Yeah, thank you, Rob. My name is Louis Senior. My e-colors are predominantly yellow-red. And I have the privilege of being working with, uh, with Rob and his organization for about seven years, like you said right now. Um, as we were discussing the hot principles, I, c I kept coming back to one of the many mistakes I've made in my, in, in my career. I went into the oil field in about 1975, and in 1977, I was asked to go over to Japan and start working on building a new drill ship, a dynamic position drill ship. I'd never been on a drill ship before and didn't understand all of the intricacies. We took the rig over to West Africa, and a few months later, I actually made a very, very serious error or, or mistake, if you like. And it was my foot on thinking through what happened that day. Many, many years later, I began to understand how important all of the things that we're going to talk about today actually become a reality. I was filling some tanks in the, on, on the drill ship that would uh, be used for displacing uh, the riser or the, or the piping that connected to the seabed in case anything ever disconnected for whatever reason. And what I and on a drill ship, all you have to do is open the, the sea chest and you get all the water you want. There was an opportunity to leave the area for a while and go up the derrick while we were pulling the pipe out. I closed all the valves to the immediate valves to the tank. I did not close the sea chest. While I was up uh, in the derrick, uh, one of the people I was working with at the time decided to do some painting and while painting, opened the valves. If I fast forward 30 years, and had I understood he was predominantly green-red and a perfectionist, this may not have happened. I would have understood as a yellow-red not to be so optimistic and close the sea chest. An hour later, the, flood, the tanks over-flooded. Um, by the time I got back down to where the area was that was flooded, there were 13 or 14 oil company representatives in there all shaking the head and going, Lewis, that is probably the end of your career. So like any other uh, self-respecting individual in those days, we got the water back into the sea where it belonged. I went ahead and packed my bags and went to see the superintendent. Still remember his name, Pete Opdewey, worked with his son years later. And this is where it comes in. I think through all of the five human performance um, principles, if you like, I made a mistake. That's number one. I went in, I dropped my bags down. I think I even dropped to my knees and apologized to Pete. And I said, I'm really, really sorry I made this terrible mistake. What time's the helicopter? And he said, why are you asking about the helicopter? I said, assume you're going to send me home. You know, I made a terrible error. He said, Lewis, will you ever do that again? I said, no, I will always close the sea chest. said, so why would we let you go? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so if you think about it in terms of error is, is normal, yes. Blame fixes nothing. He definitely didn't blame me. Now, a lot of people had a laugh on my expense. They even made an alarm. <laughs> named after me um so but there was no blame it, it, as such systems influence behavior definitely and i was part of that system for right. sure response matters and again if you think about how p up do we responded to that situation by you know making sure there was a lesson learned from it and then of course learning is essential here we are i don't know that was in 1978 several years later and the lesson still stayed right yeah, I, well, I appreciate you sharing that story, and we're going to try to talk a little bit after each of the each of the uh, parts of the course on on some things that we've learned about that principle specifically. For me, I, you know, my background was in nuclear um, and and then manufacturing, and Lewis was in oil and gas, but mine goes back probably about the same time time period, but. Uh, my story of how I can tie back to the hot principles started with the way my mother passed away. Uh, my mother passed away at the age of 40 at the, at, at, 
as the result of a medical error. And I remember that without understanding that errors happen, we held doctors and nurses to this standard that says they, you know, they should never make a mistake, even an honest one. So the blame piece really came into play for myself, my family, it just went years and years wanting to blame um, the people that caused this family catastrophe. As I look back on it, just like you said, this cycle of the of of the hop principles, the way they're described, about the you know the way we respond really matters. That learning is essential. That that um, uh, the systems may be what drive the context and the behavior. When I look back on it now, after understanding and putting in that perspective, it changes everything about the way I see how that happened. So. We appreciate you joining joining us on this journey. We are going to talk about the top uh, uh, or the five hop principles, but we're also going to talk about some intentional and practical application of those principles. So enjoy the journey and enjoy the course. <music>